Uh, but Hunter's one of those ones where when it starts out strong, it oftentimes can close strictly based off that early power. Yeah. Look at that hand. On the coin, too. That's a pretty darn brutal one. Here's the thing. I'm waiting for a crit video about this hand. <laughs> Turns out it's pretty good. Is Mana Worm, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Flame Waker, Knife Juggler? How good is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mana Worm is one of those minions that does need to be answered. But so is Knife Juggler. So is Sorcerer's Apprentice. And so is Flame Waker. Is Emery Riddle going to be able to, to answer this or pose threats that that Florida Gulf Coast has to answer this one. I mean, that's that's really what this battle is all about, is whose minions have to be answered first. Yeah. Usually the guy who has to be the one uh, playing defensively is the one at a disadvantage. And they mulligan into a Hunter's Mark. I mean, they already kept one Utilities uh, card in their hand, and they drew back oh, the no! Freezing Trap. This could be a disaster. Second Flame Waker. This is looking better and better for Florida Gulf Coast. Mana Worm is the key that unlocks the door to paradise for Tempo Mage. It's a beautiful way to put it. King Zelic is the <laughs> key that unlocks the jousting mechanic for Embry Riddle. And Pilot of Shredder does uh, not beat Sludge Belcher. Mana cost is what determines the joust. The higher mana cost wins the joust. Yeah. The thing about uh, King Zelic, though, is it's not sacrificing stats for the joust mechanic. The joust is pretty much strictly a bonus. Yeah. Because King Zelic is average, and if you consider the tribe, you might even consider it slightly above average uh, because yeah. it's a hunter class card. Uh, the joust mechanic, if you win, it's just like, you know what, that's a great bonus. <laughs> we just drew the we just drew a big minion. <laughs> yeah. How does that feel? The, like, like when you know your opponent has Doctor Room, you're like, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, I know they have Savannah High Main now. Well, when you think you know that your opponent has Doctor Boom, it's rough. But when you actually know <laughs> that your opponent has Doctor Boom. Florida Gulf Coast had a ton of options this turn, but the Flame Waker poses a major threat at the moment, and they get to take out that 3-2 to ensure they're clearing beasts off the board right now. So Embry Riddle is in a spot where they really are the ones who have to answer this board position. Freezing Trap is there's, very unlikely to be attacked into in this there's spot. There's no reason to. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe you check it in case you don't want to get your Knife Jugglers and your Sorcerer Apprentice caught in an Explosive Trap. When your opponent's playing King Zelic, do you even think they're playing Explosive Trap? Yeah, and you know what? If if you're there's nothing on the board and you're attacking in and replacing it with another Flame Maker, you're basically resetting the turn. Put the apple on your head. Oh wow. Okay. Well, I didn't expect this. Yeah, this is a really interesting play to me, and one of the reasons it's so interesting is because they didn't see Eagle Horn Bow. Um, they know that there's no Glaive Zuka effects. You know, really, the way this Knife Trickler is going to die is to Quick Shot or, or to Kill Command. <laughs> but if you know your opponent's going to draw Eagle Horn Bow, this is a great play. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say so. Cowmaster does beat Spellslinger, and that could be a pretty important pickup should that beast stay in play. The problem is that beast has got to stay in play, and with two mana, Embry Riddle does not have a way to check that knife juggler. And they're actually just going to hero power instead. I mean, this if this knife juggler picks off this King Zelic, you are likely to see Florida Gulf Coast absolutely run away with this one. Yeah. This first juggler, this first juggle really is the scary one. Okay, so now they know they're safe from that. Um, but does Florida Gulf Coast, knowing that, that Houndmaster's in the hand, does that influence them to trade at all? I think it does. I think you just play the second source's apprentice and just trade in. I mean, there's merit to if the juggle hits to not trade, because then even with Houndmaster, it goes up to three health, so you can still trade like a source's apprentice into it. Are you worried about Unleash the Hounds at all? Like, maybe you're worried about Knife Juggler Unleash the Hounds. Maybe you do trim your board down a little bit. Yeah, going into turn five, that's pretty scary. This is a this is quite a difficult decision. They're going to favor the damage and bold. With the way that their hand is built, I would venture to say that this is the right play. Because right now, all they have in their hand is amplifying effects. They have or is in a, in a board sweep that, well, I guess they can cast it on turn five. They have two Sorcerer's Apprentices out. <laughs> I, I bet that's the reason they, they actually went upstairs instead of trading was they know that if the Sorcerer's Apprentices live, they just cast Turn 5 Flame Strike. That could end up being the right play. And Houndmaster's played here along with like the Web Spinner. Yeah, that's actually like a really, really great call from Florida Gulf Coast, realizing that this risk is relatively low and that the payoff is tremendous. Because even if you're Embry Riddle, are you going to kill the Sorcerer's Apprentice or are you going to kill the Knife Juggler? Yeah, it's both. And Knife Juggler seems like the bigger threat, so you can probably hedge your bets that your Sorcerer's Apprentices are going to live. And Iron Beak Owl looks like it's going to come down, which 
means that it's either going to be an Eagle Horn Bow or a Kill Command. Yeah, it's certainly the Eagle Horn Bow if they're owling the, uh, the Mirror Image token. That much is for sure. Yeah, so they're going to start investing their life total into this board state and hope that they can recover it. But now both their minions are vulnerable. Now they're actually taking out Sorcerer to play this. Both their minions are vulnerable to just hero power now. Hmm. Florida Gulf Coast doesn't have a bad option, I don't think. Like, hero well, power their own knife juggler. That's, the, <laughs> that's like the only bad thing they could do right now. <laughs> that would be pretty bad. <laughs> Trade in both guys and then Flame Waker. Well, the, the freezing trapped Flame Waker uh, doesn't give you that much, especially I think tempo is really crucial on this turn. I feel like Flame Waker and then pinging whatever's left, if they're, if it, or the King Zelic. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like face. I like going with the Flame Waker first because you have it maximizes your chances to land the juggle. If you uh, land the juggle, that's what I meant, you get yeah. to wipe out both minions. Yep. And then which one of your minions does Embry Riddle clear? Does it even matter? They're all three priority threats. And this is kind of what we were talking about. When you have this many priority threats, uh, if, if your opponent couldn't answer the first one, they're unlikely to answer the second one. They missed the juggle, though. Ooh. And so this is their, this is their ticket. They go, you know what? Why, why slow down? If, if Juggler goes face, we're all going face. Is this a recovery turn for Embry-Riddle? Well, if they kill Command, they're not playing anything else. They can Web Spinner and Glaive Zooka, but they have to make the choice between attacking with the Glaive Zooka or attacking with the Eagle Horn Bow, which you'd always attack with the Eagle Horn Bow. Yeah. I think this is fine. You know, I think there's a lot of different ways to do this and that they all kind of pan out in a similar way. I mean, the big problem here is that you're not being able to, to do something with your Hound Master. There, there is a full board clear here with Hunter's Mark on the Sludge Belcher and Kill Command on one of the three twos. Your weapon can also go into the three two. Well, this, this will clear the board as well. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, we forgot about that. The juggle. That was actually really important. And it went face. Yeah, and it went face, dude. That's Three why they creatures played, on the board. That's why they played the web spinner first, was in case the juggle made an impact, sometimes it would impact by hitting the web spinner, which is a benefit for them. And so they end up in a pretty, I would say, a pretty decent position where Florida Gulf Coast is kind of, you know, now their decisions are kind of getting made for them. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, they're, they're having, again, priority threats played behind these that every riddle can't really answer without using more than the amount of resources they're comfortable with. Yeah, and Florida Gulf Coast knows that Embry Riddle still has that Hound Master that won that Joust, so instead of playing something like a Fallen Hero, making sure that they play around that, but it's not going to matter. Yeah, Flame Strike's Play pretty darn good here. They even have uh, two yep. chances to take out that uh, that Ironford Grizzly. But they nail it right off the bat, and now Embry Riddle's down to nine, and they're facing down a 2-4 that, once again, they cannot kill without investing, without over-investing resources. Leoc, not the best roll right here either. I mean, Florida Gulf Coast is at 24 right now. How does Embry Riddle squeeze in 24 damage before Florida Gulf Coast gets nine? Just squeeze it in. Well, let me get this 24 damage in there <laughs> real quick. Exactly. It's got to be real quick. Polywarp 4 gets drawn. This is, this is like a crazy amount of damage that Florida Gulf Coast can deal. That's such a cool card. Off these like little tiny amounts of resources. Wow. Cool stuff. <laughs> Knife Jugglers, Fallen Hero, Polymorph 4. It, it is interesting. I agree You're right. With Eve. Yeah. They even get extra damage from the Fallen Hero here. Second chance. <laughs> They're, They're just going, going for, it. for it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, how's that for Huffer? Oh. Take that. Hunter, that Huffer sounds. <laughs> just, I get night. I get. I get cold sweats. I literally just got goosebumps <laughs> from that. You literally do. Yeah, have I do have goosebumps from that noise. I wish I had my phone so I could take a picture of this and tweet it. <laughs> nope, they're gone. To prove it. <laughs> nope. They're, uh, yeah, they're gone. <laughs> Every riddle does not have a way to check this. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. It's game over. Polymorph Huffer is going to end this game. Yeah, and I mean, it was, I felt like it was over regardless. If they drew any direct damage with Spellslinger, and they're actually going to give them the benefit. Well played. Archmage, we do Water. not require your Dead assistance in this game. 
They want to end it with Spell Slinger. They don't get the chance. Four more from that Polywar four. And Florida Gulf Coast is going to tie this series two games apiece. We're going to game number five. First series of the day, game number five. I love it. And it couldn't have been done in, the, in a crazier fashion.